Yeah, so th thanks for being with us here today, um, everyone, and Dr. Rajima. So um, yeah, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Ben Adam. I'm a nef nephropathologist at the University of Alberta in Edmonton, Canada. And it's my pleasure to moderate um, today's session, which is our second in this, um, uh, this series, uh, which is a, a partnership between the Renal Pathology Society and GlomCon. It's a really a great pleasure to be here today. Uh, and to talk about this very interesting topic of lupus nephritis and idiopathic full house glomerulonephritis. So first of all, my disclosures. And then we uh, begin. So um, most of my lectures on lupus nephritis begin with a slide like this, showing you that uh, lupus nephritis is a disease which in the kidney is characterized typically by a full house pattern and a variety of light microscopic findings. The fact that lupus nephritis can reveal itself by so many different patterns is uh, probably the reason why lupus nephritis was the first disease for which a classification was created. Although it seems quite evident that, um, or uh, self-speaking, that this classification was needed to uh, subdivide different forms of lupus nephritis according to various classes, uh, we should realize for today's talk that uh, the system, of course, classifies disease, but it does not give the diagnostic guidelines. And today, diagnosing either lupus nephritis or um, idiopathic full house glomerulonephritis um, is the topic. So um, here are the basics of lupus nephritis. It is estimated to occur in up to 60% of patients with SLE. It is associated with considerable morbidity and poor survival. The diagnosis, pathogenesis, and treatment are intricately linked. And we all know that the biopsy findings may vary considerably, and therefore we have this classification. So when I was trying to sort out the basics of idiopathic full house glomerulonephritis, I have more questions for you than answers. And I'm afraid that also by the end of the lecture, most of these answers will not have the, most of these questions will not have been answered. So uh, let us just have a look at uh, the most important concerns of this entity. Is it in fact an entity? And is it an entity that closely resembles lupus nephritis or, and is it quite different from it? Is it uh, an entity that represents a form of renal limited lupus nephritis or renal limited SLE, as it were? Um, how do we recognize it? And what are important implications for management and treatment? So um, I think that uh, most of you um, who have joined uh, today's lecture will be acquainted with the experience that every once in a while, a biopsy turns up with a full house immunofluorescent pattern, a bit unexpected, uh, lesions that seem to be consistent with lupus nephritis, but then again, many lesions would be consistent with lupus nephritis, but the clinical data do not mention that the patient has SLE. Now, such a situation is usually followed by discussion between the pathologist and the clinician um, from which it can turn out that the patient was not suspected of having SLE, but that a diagnosis of SLE may be a consideration, um, or that a diagnosis of SLE is simply not very likely. Uh, for instance, if you would have a 70-year-old male with no apparent uh, clinical history, uh, that would be a different situation than if you would have um, a young woman, perhaps with several miscarriages in her recent history, and looking at these pictures from Rembrandt, uh, perhaps a touch of a butterfly rash on her skin, or even her face may reveal that she may be suffering from nephrotic syndrome even. So in particular, of course, in the latter case, it would not be unreasonable to consider the possibility that the findings in renal biopsy could point to the first sign of SLE. And of course, additional serological testing would have to be performed. 
of course, serological testing would have to be performed in all of these cases, also in the um, old male with uh, a biopsy possibly revealing lupus nephritis. But this was just to sort of sketch the clinical situation, and this is the situation I would like to focus on uh, today. And before we move on, it may be important to make some 